you guys here this morning, whether you are here live or watching us online. We are so happy we can worship with you guys to get today. Uh, so let's get let's get ready. Let's get into that mindset. As you can hear, we got we got something upbeat going, right? So let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are, for what you're constantly doing, Lord. We thank you for every testimony in this church, Lord God. And we want to start this morning by thanking you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let them hear you at home. Come on. Wandering through the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. And I've tried with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. A vagabond Just when I ran out of road I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I was not alone Pick me up, turn me around Place my feet on solid ground I think the master, I think the savior because he healed my heart, changed my name forever free. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen. Got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends, burden and bitterness, you can just keep it moving, you're not welcome here, from now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you save my soul, this wayward son has found his way back home. Because he healed my heart, changed my name, forever free. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. Hell lost another one, I am free. Yes, I am free. Yes, I am free. Hell lost another one, cause I am free. Come on, sing that. I am free. Yes, I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. Yes, I am free. Hell lost another one. Oh, I am free. Come on. Hell lost another one. Hell lost another one. Oh, I am free. Yes, I am free. Hell lost another one. Oh, I am free. Because he picked me up, and turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart. I thank the Savior. I thank God. Oh. Let's give him a shout of praise this morning because we're so grateful for what he continues to do in our lives. Amen. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, 
and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this next song that we're singing is just so fitting with that day and what it commemorates. So as we sing it, we just encourage you guys to reflect on that and what happened in that upper room as the Holy Spirit had just fell upon the apostles and all the other believers there, we just invite his spirit to do the same thing in this place and in us today. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. On us, come rest on us. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. On us. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're hearing, I know you are moving. I'm hearing, I know you will feel me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're hearing, I know you are moving. I'm hearing, I know you will feel me.
the sun shaping the shadows in my weakness your glory I'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are will you meet me here again Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, drive me away. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place.
The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit. The Lord is in this place. Come on, He's in you. The Lord is in this place. One more time, not for a minute. Not for a minute. Sing your own praise. 
praise to him today. Sing your own praise to him today. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for who you are, for who you are. Thank you, Lord. You're so faithful. You're so faithful. Never stop working. Never stop working. Not for a minute. Come on, let's finish up strong. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come home. Drive home the way. You are carriers of His presence. You are carriers of His presence. Not for. not forsaken us, Lord God. And sometimes it feels like we're just walking through dry land. Sometimes it seems like we're all alone, Lord God. But you are in this place for we are your church, not this building, not any building. We are your church, Lord God. Help us to remember that we are carriers of your presence so we can help dry bones around us come to life. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, church, for worshiping with us this morning. We just uh, pray that, uh, you know, Lord have his way through the word today, that we would be receptive to what is coming, and let's pay attention to what's going on in FYI this, this week. Amen. Starting on Sunday, June 13th, we will be changing both of our service times to 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. As the weather gets nicer, this change is going to allow us to have some extra time between services to fellowship outside. Mark your calendars for both live attendance and live streams. Starting that same Sunday, we will also have our welcome team available with a table outside for any questions. The welcome table will be available weather permitting. Make sure you stop by and say hello. If you are a part of the Oasis family, you know that our community groups are essential to stay connected. Here are the community group meetings we have coming up. Takeover Youth meets this Friday at 7.30 p.m. in the main building. Takeover is for anyone from 6th to 12th grade. Registration for Takeover will not be required. Please note, masks will be required for all community group meetings, and social distancing will be practiced. We want to thank you for your continued generosity. Through it, we are able to bless those around us and spread the message of Jesus to our communities. If you wish to partner with us, you can see the details below on screen. There are three easy ways to give. You can visit oasisnj.net slash give. You can use our simple text to give service, or you can send a check directly to our office payable to Oasis Christian Center. If you need prayer support at any time, you can use our prayer request form or live chat feature on our website at oasisnj.net. 
You can also direct message us on Facebook or Instagram. And don't forget to register for our Sunday services. Registration opens each Sunday at the conclusion of each service. You can register on oasisnj.net and select Sunday registration. Space will be limited and masks will be required for live attendance. As always, you can watch along right at home via our live stream on Facebook or our website. If you register to attend a service and can't make it for any reason, please make sure to cancel your reservation to open up room for those we have on our wait list. As we open up our ministries, we are looking for those willing to serve our church community. Specifically, our parking lot ministry is looking for support on Sunday mornings to help for both services to keep our morning parking lot organized and safe. Additionally, our tech teams on Sunday mornings that support our live services and other weekly ministries are looking for volunteers. If you are interested in these or any other ministries, please fill out one of our online connect cards at oasisnj.net slash connect. Thank you for joining us today. Amen. Good to see you guys this morning. Hey, it's a good day, amen. Do you believe that? Amen. I do. You know, even if it is a, it's been a rough morning, we declare it's a good day, amen? That this is the day the Lord has made. Sometimes you just got to declare. We're talking about speaking life. What a good opportunity to put it right into motion when you're going through difficult times, right? Thank you for those two amen. We'll go with that. But uh, hey, whether you're joining us online and of course you guys here today, man, it's so good to be a part of this service and plugged in. Uh, we're going to continue talking about speaking life, uh, actually wrapping up the series today. Hope it's been challenging. Hope you're really kind of looking at and evaluating some of the things and, you know, uh, maybe like, eh, I didn't really want to hear that. I had a couple, people, a couple people say to me in, in a good way, they were like, yeah, pastor, I really didn't want to hear that. But <laughs> I said, that's good. That's what I want. And we wanted to challenge and, and, and really move forward in that. The verse that we've been using is Proverbs chapter 18, 20, uh, verse 21. It says, the tongue can bring death or life. Um, we, you, read it, you may know it also from a different translation, that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And, and, you know, and, and that's just that one scripture, but we talked about from the Old Testament all the way in the New Testament, we'll do that today, of how the Bible talks so much about it. We talked about last week, Jesus, where he himself said that you're going to give an account for every idle word that we speak. So if, if you think this is not a serious topic, I mean, for Jesus to say that, hey, that we're going to give an account for every idle word that we speak, every careless word that we speak, I don't know how that works, but I just think there's going to be some really long lines in heaven, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't, like I said, I don't know how it works or whatever, but I think it just gives the magnitude of how we have to take the seriousness of looking at the words that we speak and, and what we do and what we say. And so as we talked about all different aspects of, uh, of the last three weeks and left off last week with gossip, looking about the fact that words are powerful and words are significant. And as we read last week, the scripture said to, one of the scriptures was that we need to take seriously our words. So, so how do we change those words? How do we begin to change the things that we do with our words? How do we begin to align it up with what God's word says and how he handles those things. Because it can be a challenge. I mean, breaking a habit is difficult, right? And, you know, I think that we get into a habit with our words too. We just get in the habit of saying things or doing things. That, you know, I shared, uh, I guess, week one, I believe it was a little bit about, you know, my, when I was younger, it was my sarcasm, uh, pre-pastor years, you know, um, and having to really change that. And the, the, the issue was, it was, it was a habit. It was so easy See, I didn't have to think to be sarcastic. It just happened. It just came out so easy. And some of them were really good, good lines too. You know, bad, but good. It's like, wow, I should have been writing those things down, you know. But it was so easy. Then to change it was hard because it was so easy to keep doing it. And to be honest, all these, we won't even count how many years later it's been now. But the simple fact is that even though I have pushed that aside, I, I took steps to change the course, to change the break those habits. You know that even still today, that, you know, when you're kind of worn down, kind of dealing, irritated, you're kind of dealing with stuff, that all of a sudden, some of those one-liners just come right back. And I have a choice to say, do I say this? And I really would like to say this right now? Or am I going to take the serious of how my words can do damage and just let that, that go. What, what am I going to do? What, what, the, what is the choice and decision I'm going to make? So um, you think about this. You know, for, I think every, all of us have done this. You, you've gotten sick, and you're like, oh, you know, I, I'm feeling sick. I'm feeling this. And so we'll, we'll go to the, a pharmacy, and, you know, you don't have to walk about, about, a mile, about, a, about a block and a half for any pharmacy, probably in this area at least. You run into a pharmacy somewhere. You go to the pharmacy, and you'll get something, you know, for what it is that, that you have, 
um, you know, to help you feel better or take care of it. Um, and so a lot of times I've heard people say this, well, you know, I took that, but I'm still sick. And the funny thing about that is this, that when we're taking over-the-counter medication that's not a medication that's actually going to fix the problem, all we're doing is treating the symptoms, right? You know, it, you know I think I was reading one thing that they were talking one time, but like if we would just, before we took, um, uh, you know, a, a, a medicine for, you know, for a headache, if we just drank a gl big glass of water because most of us are dehydrated, we're walking dehydration, you know, vessels, <laughs> That we, we haven't drunk, oh yeah, I drank some water. Yeah, yeah, I drank, I drank this is what I drank today. Drunk, I, I drank like a, you know, a little cup today of water. No, you need like eight more of those is what you need or more. And so they were saying that, you know, that if you just drank some water, a big cup of water, that it would probably fix your headache and you don't have to take a medication that's going to have some side effect down the road. So what happens is that we're so used to trying to fix the symptom that we don't take the time to fix the problem. We don't address the root of it. You're just treating the symptoms but not fixing the problem. And until we get to the root of the issue, you're not going to cure the sickness. You know, just masking it isn't going to help the situation. And that's physically, but I'm talking about further that. I'm talking about the, 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 the words that we speak, the, the effects of the words that we speak and, and the things that we deal with. And most Christians only want to treat the symptoms in life. Listen, at least from all the years that I've been pastoring, it's only a handful of people that, that I've ran into and I've counseled that actually really w took the advice to fix the root of the problem because we just want a Band-Aid so we don't have to deal with it today. But you know what? If you just mask it today, it's coming back. And the problem is that the longer it goes, it's coming back worse. <laughs> My toe, perfect example that I dealt with. I ignored it for about 10 years. And so I can't complain about the fact that the surgery that I had to have about a, almost two months ago, about a month, a little over a month and a half ago, whatever, and that having to deal with that, and it was frustrating. But if I had just done something 10 years ago instead of masking the problem and dealt with the root of it, it wouldn't have been what I had to do, right? But we all do that. And even when we come to the things we're talking about this. So, you know, we said this last week that, that Jesus didn't come to modify our life. He came to transform our life. And most of the time, we just want to modify something. We put a little Band-Aid on it, put a little fix on it today. But we don't deal with, with the, the root of the issue, the real issue, because we don't like to deal with the real issue. The real issue can be messy. It's challenging. I've got I've to take serious thought. I have to take serious measure. I have to really make it a point to not do this or say this or, or change this or change that. We don't want to do that because it's just so easy to keep doing the same old thing over and over and over again, but it never fixes the problem. So how do we experience transformation? You have to go to the source. And in Luke chapter 6, verse 45, it says this, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. So if we want to deal with what's coming out of our mouth, it's not a modification of just, well, I just won't say that today. It's really looking and seeing where is that coming from? Where's that hurt? Where's that pain? Where's that anger? Where's that bitterness coming from? And so it says here that what you say flows from, it flows from the heart. It flows from what's on the inside of my heart. See, um, it's not saying that, now you say, well, pastor, I'm not an evil person. Okay, let's move past the evil part, okay? I, I'm not saying it's evil, but what happens is we deposit evil things within our heart, not good things, things that are not glorifying God, not things that are going to build you up and strengthen you, the person that God wants you to be. We, we take and we entertain or we nurse offenses and hurts and bitterness and anger and resentment. And we'll, we'll take and we'll hold on to these things in our life and we tuck it down, we, we shove it down in our heart and we hold on to it, and we marinate it, it ferments, it sours and it just stays there. And then we open our mouth when the situation's right and bloop, we just vomit it all out of there. You're like, where'd that come from? That's not me. Oh yes, yeah, because you've, we've allowed it to be on the inside of us. And that's the part that we don't like to deal with. And that's the part we don't like to address. You know, other people's junk that they dumped on us. You ever had people dump their garbage in your yard? 
not your yard yard, but uh, your life. And then just some people, you know, oh, you know what it's, I, can I just tell you, and they'll just dump and dump and dump and dump. Oh, man, I feel so much better. Thank you, bye. And there you are, and you're just like, like you were just slimed, right? I don't know, I mean, there was that, remember there was a kid's show years ago. Remember that? Oh, I think it was called Slimed, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. And I don't know who would sign up for this. I, I definitely wouldn't. It'd mess up my hair. I wouldn't do that. You know, <laughs> I would, I'm very neurotic with that. Where they just stand on this thing and it's like slime, just like all, I'm like, Ugh. I know. But actually, you know what? I did do it for VBS one year. I allowed my, one year, right? Raquel, you guys remember that? I did get slimed. It was a challenge, but I did it and I survived. And I'm here today. I don't plan on ever doing it again either though. But you know, that's the same thing. That's exactly what we do when we allow people to dump their trash, their emotional trash, their baggage. It was faster. Well, how, how am I going to talk to someone? You know, let, me, let me just say, yes, I think we need to be there to be able to talk with people and be that person for them. But I don't know about you, but I've encountered a lot of people, maybe because maybe the, the pastor role is part of it, but that wasn't always the issue. But there are just some people that don't, they don't want an answer to the problem. They don't want a solution. They don't want to hear anything that you have to say about trying to help them with the situation. Listen, I'm all for helping someone that wants help. I'm, I'll spend as much time as I possibly can for a person that wants to get out of a situation, that wants someone to help walk them through it and give them the answers the best that they possibly can. Yes, I, I want to help. I want to connect to people. But what I've also found, I ran into, there are just some people, they don't want the answers. They just want somebody that they can vomit on. I know that's a strong word, but that's pretty much what it is. Because you'll try to tell them and say, hey, what about this? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I tried that, but nothing. I tried this, I tried, I tried it. They tried everything, and they don't want to do anything. Because, as I said before, we don't really want to deal, we just want to band it. We don't really want to deal with the real issue. A surgeon goes in and has to cut away things that, that are either gone bad or that are cancerous or that are diseased because the patient can't get better until the surgeon removes the junk that's there that's killing them or that's harming them. And that's where we need the Holy Spirit to come into our life and the Word of God to be a part of our life and the decisions and choices that we make that we put into motion to begin to cut away and take away the things that are harming our life and harming our relationships. And the Bible says that out of the heart, all that junk that we don't like many times, that we got to trace it back to the source. And the source of that is what's on the inside of it. It's the heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's on the inside? And so that's really a hard question for many people because, first off, a lot of times we don't hear ourselves. We don't think that we're doing that. And I think that's the part that we have to hit the pause button and really take the moment to listen. To what, what am I saying? Why is this always happening to me? I remember talking to someone one time and they were saying, yeah, I go from work to work and work, you know, job to job and I always have these problems all the time. And, and, and I, I struggled with telling them this because I was just like, I, know they're not, I don't think they're going to want to know what I'm about to say to them. But I said to them, I said, so what is the common element in every one of those jobs that you've been to? I don't know, just people that, that work in those places. I'm like, I said, I'm not saying you're the problem, but you're the common element in every one of those areas. You're the one going from job to job to job. So you need to start with you and look at what are you doing in each one of those jobs that's causing that situation. It was the same problem in every single job that they went to. They weren't too happy about that. <laughs> See, sometimes we just got to stop and think and look and see because what's on the inside coming out is going to affect everything else around you. And so let's look at, um, anyway, so, so let, let's look at some scriptures that give us some direction on things to guard. There's, the Bible talks about a number of things about guarding. So there's three things I want to talk about that the Bible says that we are to guard. And the first one is this, we have to guard our ways guard our ways. The scripture for that is Psalms 39. We don't know if it was written by Moses or David. They're kind of divided on wh who it may be. Neither here nor there, but it says this. Psalms 39 verse 1, the Passion Translation says, here's my life motto. So if someone says this is my motto, in other words, this, this, is, this is what I'm going to live by. This is, this is the, the motto I have. This is going to be the thing that's going to help direct me as I move forward. And this is what they say. This is, here's my life motto. The truth that I'm going to live by. I will guard my ways for all my days. So number one, he says, I'm going to guard my ways. You talk about guarding. What is that? They, they, you're protecting something. You're, see, to guard something, you have to be aware of it, right? You have to be attentive. 
a guard that's sleeping on the job is not any help, right? <laughs> you know? If you're, sleep, if, you're, if you're guarding something, it means I'm awake, I'm attentive, I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking for things that are wrong. I'm looking for things that should not be here right now in this situ situation. And he says here, I will guard my ways for all my days. I will speak only what is right, guarding what I speak. He says, I'm guarding my ways, I'm guarding what I speak. Like a watchman guards against an attack of the enemy. I will guard and muzzle my mouth. I love the Passion Translation on certain verses. <laughs> I'll muzzle my mouth when the wicked are around me. I will remain silent and will not grumble or speak out of my disappointment. How many times do we speak out of our disappointment? Out of our hurt? Out of our pain? You know, that's... See, when we're going... Listen, and we, we I think speaking where you have people that are a counselor or someone that's going to help you or somebody, a friend that you could talk to or a spouse that you, you're able to connect and talk. Of course, you, you, you do that. But we've got to be so careful in the times when we're going through situations where there's issues in our life as to what we say. And they're just, we, we probably need to say less when, when, when we're frustrated or angry or going through situations because you're going to say things you're going to regret. I mean, to be quite honest, and I mean, I, I've been very open with, you know, my challenges and journey that I, that I shared last October, you know, just the stuff I went through and that the PTSD and all the struggle, the depression and stuff I kind of been going round and round and with. And my kids picked it up like a year before that, though. You know why they picked it up? Because the way I was talking to them. When I would get stressed, how I would, how I would act to things. And I, w I was short. I was like, you know, I started getting sarcastic. It started coming. I didn't even, I didn't even realize it. And stuff was coming back. And, and they're like, Dad, what is wrong? I think I shared that one time about last October where they, they said, Dad, we were, we were on vacation. And they looked at me and they said, they got me in the, in the hotel room. We're standing there and like, they kind of cornered me and they're like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, what do you mean? What? Nothing, nothing's wrong with me. What are you talking about? You know? But see, what happened was I was speaking out of that, that depression. I was speaking out of that hurt. I was speaking out of the stuff I needed to deal with, not hearing how I was talking to them not hearing how I was hurting them. I was insulting them. I was saying things to them that wasn't my character. It was out of character for me. It wasn't, it wasn't me, but I was speaking out of my disappointment. I was speaking out of my hurt. And, and so we, in those cases, thank God for somebody to be able to say something too. But how I changed my sarcasm back in my, you know, 18, 19, 20 year right there was a friend of mine. I, I've said this before. Where he said to me, he says, Fred, do you, have you, do you hear how you're talking to your, to your, your dad? And I was like, what? I'm talking fine. He goes, no, no, you need to listen. You need to listen to what you either record, what you, how you're talking to him, or listen. You need to hear what you're saying because you don't understand what you sound like when you're talking to him. And there's things in our life that we have to roll back. And as, as the, the psalmist said here, I will remain silent and I will not grumble. There's times that we just need to make sure that we just don't say anything. When you're angry, maybe you need to go in a room and count to 20 or 200 or 2,000. I don't know, maybe for sometimes, sometimes it's a 2,000 moment, amen? <laughs> Plus. <laughs> and sometimes we've got to, but why? Because, because we're going to say something that's going to be damaging to somebody else. And the psalmist says, I will, I, I will not grumble or speak out of my disappointment. The, the Hebrew word that's used for ways there means a well-trodden path. Okay, a, a path. You go through woods, you see a path. You know, people cut pathways, you know, th across grass and things like that. And before you know it, there's a, 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 a my, um, the, uh, what do call it, post office in my town. Um, the way it's built is that people kind of park on the side street and then they walk. And they, what they do is they cut around the building across through the grass. And so literally there was a path that was like, you know, the sidewalk goes this way, but everybody's doing this. And, and it wasn't just a little bit of grass dead. They, literally, they had worn an impression. If you walk, which I've walked it out a couple of times too. Everybody else did. So I was just kind of following, following the path. Stupid, you know, thing. Then finally, I was like, wait, would I want that in my yard? No. So I started walking around. But what happened, it was, it was a pitted path. So literally, they put a little fence up there that forces everybody to have to at least take part of the sidewalk and stop walking across the grass because they were destroying it. A path is something that, that, you, that you know that has been repeated again and again and again. It's really a pathway that you walk on would be something that is, has become grooved because you're constantly walking on it. 
for our spiritual life, what we're talking about, he's not talking about a spiritual path. He's not talking about a physical path, but he's talking about how I'll guard my path, I'll guard my ways. It's how I'm doing life, how I'm repeating it over and over, day after day after day after day. It's, it's, in, it's the response that has been so often repeated that it's become ingrained into the fabric of your life that you don't even know that you're talking like that. You don't even know you're saying that. You don't even know that you're responding that way. It's that moment of how we handle anger, how we handle frustration, how we act to people within those things that aren't bringing glory to God, but are tearing down. And so, you know, we, we move beyond that. God has not created us to walk in habitual negative things. He's called us to, to be free from that, to be breaking free from those things. To once we realize we need, to once we realize that's where we are, that's when we have to make the decision, decide to change, and then guard our ways. If I'm going to change my ways, but it's hard, right? When you used to snacking, I, I when I study, I don't, I, I'm bad. At, I snack. I'm not a snacker any other time. And we have pretty healthy stuff in our house. You know, my daughter, you know, she's. You know, she's almost vegan. Every now and then she has her moments, you know, but she's not. But anyways, and, and stuff. So we have, we, and we just in general, we don't buy junk type snacks and things like that. But man, when I'm studying, I don't know about, I'm, sit, I'm just sitting there on the computer and studying and books and stuff like that. And I just, I'm like, I'm like, I need something to chew on. So, I'll, you know, so I either, I'll eat, plow through a bag of almonds or, or some, if someone smuggles some junk stuff in, I'm sneaking from that, you know, and, you know, it, it just needs something. Uh, and, you know, it's like it's, you're just, I'm trying to think why I'm saying that. But anyways, the, the confession, I guess. I don't know why I, why I was saying that, but, but I have to, oh, I have to guard my ways. So I have to, like, remind myself when I get up without even, see, I'm studying, and then I'm like, oh, you ever do that? You just kind of get up and I'm start walking. I'm like, why am I going to the kitchen? What am I doing? I'm like, oh, go sit back down, Fred. Because I'm going to go in there and dig through to find something to eat, and I'm not, I'm not even hungry. That's a path. We're just used to it. We just do it. We don't even think about it. And so when we talk about with words and how we handle things, you see, we've got repl- to guard our ways, replace them with habits that are Christ-like. See, what things need to change to make a new path in my life? The psalmist says, I will guard my ways. I will not say this. I will not. What he's doing, he's creating a new path. What new path that, can, that what new path is the Holy Spirit dropping in your heart right now saying, you know what? You need to do this. You need to change this. That's not me. That's the Holy Spirit speaking in your heart. And so your job and my job is to go back and say, okay, what do I need to do to change that path? I need to create a more Christ-like path in my life. Amen? Listen, if we just listen to a message today, go, oh, that was so nice. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want you to do that. I want you to go home and say, man, I don't like him right now. <laughs> well, not really. I do want you to like me. But, but I want you to have like, oh, man, I gotta, what am I going to do with that now? That's unsettling. I should have watched it from home today. <laughs> I could have turned him to some, could have turned to Stephen Furtick instead or something like that, you know. Well, I'm glad you're still watching. Don't turn. So I'm just sitting there saying, so don't. Anyways, I got to guard my ways. Second thing is, is guard my words. How do I guard my words? If all our, we said this last week, if all of our words in one day would fill a 50 to 60 page book, in one year, the average person would fill 132 books of 200 pages each. So my question is this. Out of those 132 books that you could potentially write with the words that you speak in a year, how many pages would be filled with words that were angry? Words that were careless? Words that were hurtful? See, what, what would be on those pages? See, we don't think of us... See, if I thought about the fact that, wait a second, every word that I'm saying is being recorded, I've probably changed what I'm saying. I would be more mindful of the words that I would speak. So if we think of it in that way, that, that those, the, every word that I say, literally, I'm literally writing a verbal book. What am I saying? And how is that impacting? How is that affecting other people? Um, Proverbs 21 uh, and verse 23 says this, Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and you will stay out of trouble. Isn't that so practical and true? That just sometimes we should just not say what we think. 
we need to install that filter between the brain and the tongue, right? That says, you really, do you really want to say that? Oh, I really want to say it. Well, if you, if you were going to say it like that, then you really shouldn't say it because it's probably not something you should be saying because somebody's going to get hurt and mad and offended. How many relationships have been destroyed because we've not installed that filter to think before we speak? Amen? If I don't guard my words, I'm going to create trouble. Proverbs 12, 18 says, Reckless words are like the thrust, reckless words, words that are not thought out, words that are just thrown out there, are like the thrusts of a sword, cutting remarks meant to stab and to hurt. But the words of the wise soothe and heal. Which words am I speaking? Jabbing words that are cutting are healing words that are soothing and healing. See, it's, it's this about looking and saying, okay, wh what am I doing? It's being responsible. If I'm guarding my words, how am I guarding them? See, before you speak, think, what will these words do? How will these words affect this person? Well, they need to hear this. But there is that little thing that the Bible talks about, that we speak the truth. But that little part that we don't add on there is in love. And if it's in love, love cares. Love thinks of the other person first. Love does the thing, the best thing. Love will sacrifice to help somebody else. So sometimes we got to sacrifice some of the words that we want to say because the way we're going to say it is going to hurt somebody in a bad way. Now I say, well, what about a person that really needs to know it? There's a way to have a conversation with somebody that's not a sword going, ah, 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 ah. It says that we're supposed to say it, not reckless words, but words that are wise. Amen? And so think before I speak. What will these words do? Ephesians 4.29 says this, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Now, there's a, there's a lot in this verse here, which, but it, it's really cool. Message translation says, say only what helps each word a gift. It's the picture of the words that we speak or words that are gifts, that are helping somebody, that are encouraging somebody, that are building somebody up. So, Pastor, I mean, that just sounds like you're telling me to be Mr. Rogers. Just everything's all nice and lovely and never, never a bad day. What I'm saying is this, that love can correct someone, but correct them in a way that's not going to destroy them. See, you can correct somebody by lifting them up instead of pushing them down. Most of the ways that, only, that we've all experienced in life or that we help correct somebody else is that we, we have to, well, I'm just going to make them feel the pain. We don't say it in that way, but I got to crush them to build them up. I need to hurt them with this because if I don't say it this way, they're never going to listen to me. You don't know what they're going to listen to. So there's a way that I correct. There's a way that I handle difficult situations. We always have to have, we always have to confront things and have difficult situations and stuff we have to talk about. And I'm not saying walk around with flowers and, oh, everything's all nice and sweet. But you can have a conversation that is pointed, that is direct, but one that is not going to be reckless with your words, but words that are going to be thoughtful, words that are going to build, words that are going to encourage. Because the idea, if you want to help, if you really want to help somebody, it's always got to be lifting up right? It's never pulling down. The only time that we're pulling down, and maybe you don't realize it, but most of the time that people are pulling people down with their words is because they're manipulating them, or they're wanting them, they're wanting themselves to be higher than them, and so they'll pull somebody down, make them feel inferior, which automatically makes you feel more superior. That's the other word I'm trying to think. And so be careful with our words. Amen? Guard our words. Are, is my words building up? Are they tearing down? And, and, and it said this, this here, what we just read. He says, and that it may give grace to those who hear. You know, the, what grace is, is defined as undeserved favor. Scripture is saying that I, that I need to give. So in other words, I'm giving a gift of grace to somebody. Well, pastor, you know, they don't deserve this nice word right now. <laughs> but he's talking about undeserved favor. In other words, you're giving them something that they, they don't d even deserve, but you're giving them something good. See, that's the answer to the people that you just have, that have hurt you. Because as we all know that, you know, it'd be, that hurt and pain that we think that we're giving somebody else, it's just poison that's affecting us until we give it away and get rid of that. 
And so when it talks about that we are to, to give them this gift of grace and that to give grace to those that hear, give this gift of grace, it's, it's me literally giving undeserved favor to somebody. I'm being nice to someone that most people will say, well, they don't deserve you being nice to them. They don't deserve you giving them any consideration. But isn't that what Jesus said when he said, turn the other cheek? Go the extra mile? Same thing. It's not easy. See, like I said, we don't like to deal with this. This is the stuff that, uh, I don't want to do that. Just give me a Band-Aid. I don't want surgery. Pastor, I didn't ask for surgery today. Just give me a Band-Aid. But sometimes we need surgery. Amen? Okay, you still with me? We're almost done. So you can breathe in a couple minutes, okay? And we'll be good. So words are vessels. Think of it this way. Words are vessels. They're like something that's, that you feel. Guard what they carry. I got to guard what they carry because they can carry doubt. See, I can pour out doubt to people. I can pour out fear to people. I can pour out hatred. I can pour out despair to people. Or I can pour out hope. I can give love. I can give encouragement. See, I can, what, what am I carrying? What is it that I'm giving out? Being aware of what I'm carrying, the words I'm saying, and the changing uh, are, are my ways and my words are important and vital. The Word of God tells us that the symptoms of our relationship, the problems, the attitudes, the words, the temptations, all can be traced back to one place, and that's found in Matthew 15, 18. But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. Remember, it's not just modifying the words that we speak, but dealing with the source. And the Bible says that the source is the heart. That's really the part we have to come back and deal with. So the third, last thing is guard my heart. About a thousand years before Jesus, Solomon taught that, that, that same thing. He said in Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. As I was studying this and, and reading it from different versions, translations i should say um i saw something quite it was quite interesting in, in the subnotes of the passion translation it, it talked about it defined the, the hebrew word as where it talks about the fact that the course or direction or issues of life as seasons through the seasons of life it determines the seasons of your life what i found interesting they they, they went and they they broke it down and it said it this way it says that out of your heart flow the seasons and specifically the the springtime of life you think it's spring spring is always about newness right it's like the the, the dead of winter the, the the brown of winter the dead plants that looks all dead everything looks all brown and dead but really it's life waiting to happen and when springtime comes all of a sudden the flowers come out things are growing yeah allergies are there but you know my, my son's like i hate springtime i'm like it's, it's so beautiful he's like i hate it because he's got bad allergies you know but and, but but springtime is it's talking about life. And what we're saying here is that, the, that when I guard my heart, I have to guard my heart because it determines the seasons of my life, the new things that are coming forth in my life. See, it's our hearts, not our circumstances, that shape the seasons of our life. Because you know why? We can be going through a really difficult season of our life, but if our heart is filled with the right stuff, I can bear that season with a strength and a joy and a peace that doesn't even make sense. The Bible says a peace that surpasses all understanding. How do we get through seasons? How do, that, how do we talk about joy and the power and joy? And how can that be a reality? It's because my heart is tapped into the, the, the seasons of my heart. I'm guarding my heart because it's directing the seasons. And so no matter what may be going on around me, the peace and the strength and the joy that Jesus gives me in the midst of the seasons of my life. It starts with the heart. And so, what's going on in my heart? If I don't like the season that I'm in, I need to change my heart. So guard your heart. Be careful what you allow in. Watch what comes out. Stand guard over. Monitor your heart. In other words, so I'm, I'm guarding the hurts, the jealousy, the greed, the pride, the disappointment, the mistrust, the guilt, the anger. Because that's affecting my life. I've got to guard that. I've got to look at that and, and attain to those things. And so he goes on. What is the deep of your heart? What's, what's in the depth of it? What's in the depth of my heart? Um, because if I don't know what's in the depth of my heart, I have to also understand it will not stay hidden in the depths of my heart. Because in a moment of weakness, in a moment of anger, what's inside there is going to come up. Right? 
And so I can't just ignore it. It's going to rise up from the depths. It will shape the seasons of my life. So what resides in the secret places will not stay put, but it will come up. It's kind of like this. When we think about this, like the words, let me just, you guys have been wondering if it was just because I was going to be thirsty today or what. No, it's not I'm thirsty, but. So think about this. When you, our life, so this is our life. And so it's, we just fill it up with life. And so when you think about here, is, here we are, and, you know, you, this is my heart. But so, you know, I go through life, and a little little hurt happens. It's like, eh, you know, it's a little bit, not too much going on, but then something else, anger, and I don't know, whatever, and different things begin to happen in my life, and those things begin to take on an effect in my life. And as it gets in there, what was once beautiful and clear, anybody want to drink? I don't know, my puppy loves to eat dirt lately. I don't know what's wrong with her, but she'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but the heart becomes contaminated. Maybe this is where you are right now. Maybe different degrees of stuff in our heart. But I need to address the problem because the thing is, I can, add, I can keep adding water and keep adding, well, I just, you know, just a little Band-Aid here, Try to fix it, and it gets, but the problem is that it's not changing it. I need a transformation. I need the Holy Spirit to come into my life and just transform my life, my heart. But that doesn't just happen on its own. It's Him working in your life. Because we still got to go back. We talked about the things that we've got to guard. We've got to guard our ways. We've got to guard our words. We've got to guard our heart. There's things I've got to do. We invite the presence of God into our life to, 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 to show us, hey, this is, what, this is what it looks like. This is what you're dealing with. But you've got you to deal with it. You've got you to handle it. You've got to turn it around and let this power, this presence of the, of the Holy Spirit to come into your life and feel it, fill it up and, and begin to give you a joy that you didn't have before. To, a release from the pain, a release from the hurt. And allow him to begin to do that. Get God's word inside. Say, so, well, I tried that one time, but I didn't feel it. I begin to quote what God's word says. God, I thank you that you give me a peace that surpasses all understanding. I don't, a peace that doesn't even make sense right now. So I tried that a couple times. It ain't going to take, because you've been, listen, we want to try a couple times for stuff that we've been pouring in for years. Oh, I just quoted a scripture the other day, and I still feel the same. Yeah, you've been quoting junk for years. You got a lot of stuff to get out of there. Does that make sense? This is not what Jesus wants for you. This is why words are so powerful. Because it contaminates our heart. And then, as Jesus said, everything in life flows out of our heart. And so you may have something that may have some nice in it, but now we go and we pour it into a new relationship or whatever a new life or people around me before you know it we've contaminated everything relationships job family man we let's not give the devil any more opportunity amen i'm going to close out with the scripture galatians 5 1 says at last we have freedom for christ has set us free we must always cherish this truth and firmly refuse to go back into the bondage of the past. Refuse to go back in the bondage of the past. Now, in this, he was referring to some going back into legalism that Paul was talking about, the Church of Galatians, stuff like that. But you know what? It applies to, it may reply to legalism, but it also applies to the bondage of the past the hurts of the past because Christ has come and made us free and he doesn't want us to go back into the bondage of that. He doesn't want to be bound by that. And it's time to set it free. Amen. It's time to allow our life, the change to begin within our heart, that we allow the Holy Spirit to begin to move in our life and be that, res that response. That when we, before we open our mouth, that we give that, that little check that says, wait, what are you about to say? I got to form a new path where you would once say something to the situation. Now you pause for a second and think before you open your mouth before you have an attitude in something that's not right, that you pause for a moment, you, you give the Holy Spirit the opportunity to speak into that situation in your life, to allow you to, to say, wait a second, that's not Christ-like. That's not taking me in the direction I need to go. That's, what would Jesus, would Jesus do that? No. See, it's allowing our life to be shaped and changed, transformed 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the Word of God, and by us making the decisions and choices to follow those things. Because I, I listen, I tie up God's hands when I don't take, when I refuse to follow the Word and follow that in my life and put a thing, then I'm, I'm keeping the Holy Spirit from working in my life. Oh yeah, I want to change, want to change. Okay, then He wants to partner with you to make that change. Amen? So let's do it. Father, I thank you today for your power and your presence in our life. Lord, just ask that we just be challenged by your word. Let what we've talked about today, what we've challenged today, that Lord, that it begins to move within us, that we just literally begin to look at those things in our life, that, that we've allowed the enemy to just taint our life, to, to contaminate our, our heart. And let's, as we take the step now, just to, to give you the opportunity to flood into it. Lord, let your word be alive in our life. As we read it, let's embrace it. We invite the Holy Spirit into our heart just to, to purge those things out, to put a, to put a binder on our, our mouth and our, our, our thinking that, that, we, that we, we respond to the voice of the Holy Spirit before we say something. We allow that inner check, that inner voice that Him speaking into our lives saying, wait, let's go a different path. Let's handle this in a different situation. Father, let our life just begin to be changed and move in another way so that what flows out of our heart is your peace, your love, your joy, and your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless. Thank you. So we just want to say a big thank you also for those of you who continue to support. I know we say this every week, but we don't do our regular giving, passing, and buckets at this point with, still with the restrictions and stuff. So thank you for your giving online. Thank you for what you do. You enable as a ministry to do what we do. Without that, we can't function. Uh, so thank you guys for being a part of that. Thanks for being here today. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next week. Amen. God bless. Thank you. If you need prayer, of course, uh, I think we have some team members that will be up front. Yes. Thanks.